coming up on City Spotlight. We're on location in Charleston for this latest Season 9 episode. First, we talk with Charleston Mayor Dr. Brandon Combs and Charleston City Manager Scott Smith about recent and future economic developments along Lincoln Avenue and an update of public works projects on the southern part of Charleston. Then we'll talk Eastern Illinois University with EIU Vice President for Enrollment Management, Josh Norman, about the end of another school year at EIU. And Josh reflects on EIU President Dr. David Glassman's time at EIU. We're on location and talking all things Charleston, next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are out of the studios once again here in Season 9, and we're taping in a familiar spot. City Hall, Council Chambers of the City of Charleston. And we welcome back to the program two familiar faces to help us out. Dr. Brandon Combs, the Mayor of Charleston. Brandon, great as always. Thanks for me. And Scott Smith, Charleston City Managers. Good Scott. To, good to see you again. It's been a while since we've had both of you on together, but great to have you here in City Hall and the Council Chambers. And uh, you guys brought up an idea that we're going to follow through down the road. And I want, to, want you guys to give a chance to talk about uh, the folks around you here at the city of Charleston uh, that help you get all that you get done. Yeah, so uh, I think what you alluded to was that uh, here recently we anointed two deputy city managers, Steve Pamprin and Heather Kuykendall, um, who are actually in the audience today. And uh, they are, uh, they are uh, equipped to assist me in the daily operations and we're in a uh, 18, 20 month training program. I've divided up half my office and given half to Steve. He's over public works, parks and recreation, over IT, and Heather's over finance, police, library, um, and uh, helping me with the general administrative stuff. So uh, I know we talked about maybe having them on a future show, and I look forward to that. We'd have to move that one to the studio to get everybody yeah. mic'd up properly, so yeah. we look forward to that. And we've had Steve on the program before and worked on various projects with him. Yes. And also, Heather, we look forward to having her on here on City Spotlight. Without further ado, we only have 12 minutes. Let's dive into all that's going on on Lincoln Avenue uh, before we've taped and currently. So uh, let's start on the east side of Charleston there. What is that development going on over by Walmart? So that's a, pl a plasma center, okay. uh, private development plasma facility right out there in front of the strip center to the east or the west side of Walmart. Okay, very good. Very, very noticeable because uh, Walmart is a very high mm -hmm. traffic area. Yes. All right, let's go from east to west and... Uh, the, uh, there's a Thai restaurant that uh, has been a different form of oriental restaurants through the years, and there's some work going on there. Right. So you may recall there was a food truck sitting out uh, next to the old El Rancherito for quite a while. Correct. And they actually moved that operation full-time into the former Thai uh, facility, Kamikaze, I believe is the name of it. Mm -hmm. Been there several times. Right. Uh, they did a complete total facelift of the building, repainted. Um, and I think they're doing very, very well. The building looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I miss one, because we're talking about things going on, being developed right now, and things since the last time that we've taped, just cut me off and yeah, sure. talk about yeah. it. Uh, I understand the second Hux is coming to Charleston around the 10th and Lincoln area. Ten, between 10th and 11th, right okay. there in, the, in that one block area there. And for folks at home, what was that facility that was there many, many moons ago? So believe it or not, it was my grandpa's <laughs> filling station. Okay. It was an original Gulf gas station site uh, back in the 60s and early 70s. I think the... I think the station closed down around 74, 75, somewhere in that. My grandpa uh, Otto and his brother Edgar owned the filling station there. And then uh, mm -hmm. shortly after that, uh, the MacArthur family purchased it and it became the MacArthur Honda store for quite a few years. And then I believe uh, Charlie Easterday had a mm -hmm. t-shirt printing business in there. Wow. It's been a couple things over the years, right. but yeah, it's most got, recently it's it's set empty for quite a while. It's got a lot of history. Yeah. Uh, the addition of another another gas station on Lincoln Avenue, and we see the traffic that happens here on the north side of Charleston with the Hucks, 
I can only imagine it's going to get used a lot. Yeah, and I think uh, Hux has told the mayor and I, and I think Steve too, that the, the Charleston location on the north side is one of the busiest uh, Hux facilities that they own, uh, yeah, especially in this region. Yeah, Illinois, it's yeah. one of the busiest, so they want to I don't to be recommend here. it for new drivers. Yeah. And I know what, what they're, the, they're built, no, <laughs> what they're building is uh, is one of their newer concept stores. Okay. Um, I believe this is maybe number five that they're putting up. So, I oh, mean, wow. it's uh, it's going to be a huge face facelift to that area um, of Lincoln, so... All right, fantastic. So a new Hux coming there to or the 10th and 11th Lincoln Avenue area. Um, we're going a little bit further west. I guess you wanted to name drop some things that have popped yeah. up. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts went in the former credit union. Great addition to Lincoln Avenue. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited about that. Mentioned to you that Arby's did a complete and total facelift since mm -hmm. the last time I was on the show. Um, uh, Mark Jackson moved the former Panther Paw mm -hmm. out of uh, what would be the west side of the building that he was sharing with mm -hmm. Casa Del Mar into the former, uh, I call it the Schwinn mm -hmm. building, okay. um, yes. uh, which the Harrison family owned. Yes. Um, and, and so uh, he's got that operation going now. Um, so those were some things right in that block that we wanted to highlight. Okay. But yeah, obviously Duncan being the complete transformation of the credit union. So that's that's been great. I can't even recognize what it used to be because I yeah. used to, I used to bank with yeah, the me too. Union there. Still do. <laughs> Very good. All right, continuing along Lincoln Avenue, we're moving a little bit further west, and an interesting sign there at the How Y'all Doing building. Yes, it's uh, a pending sale. What what is going on there? So former Marion Yurt uh, is in a collaborative real estate uh, operation with Dan Corey and Mike Titus and. Uh, John and the, and the firm listed that property uh, several months ago. The former owner passed, and John reached out to them and uh, was successful in getting the property listed, and they uh, are under contract. Uh, of course, the new buyer uh, has a period of time in which they have to uh, complete their due diligence, but we're, we're excited about that and what that might or could become uh, in the future, and maybe at the next show we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that. Off camera, there's been a lots, lots, lots of conversation about like what, sure there what, has. what, what, what <laughs> could that be? I do remember eating there way back yes, in the day. Yeah. Very yes. good. Kind of across the street, and we've seen kind of a transformation process going on over at the BP uh, Lambo gas station there. Uh, just driving over here this morning, in the far background of my eyes, I saw a crane. So. Tell us what's going on and what will be going on with Lambos. So Mike is redeveloping that property. Again, much like Hux is gonna build a brand new uh, BP uh, station there uh, in the backside of the property. He tore down the old Smokies, uh, right. which originally was a Wendy's back when I was a kid. Yes. Um, and tore down that facility. And actually in that area is gonna be where the new car wash is gonna go. But mm -hmm. what you're seeing today uh, is the underground storage tanks going in that'll right. serve the new, the new gas station. Hope you get out there and get some video of that because that's yeah. uh, anytime a crane's out, that's a pretty impressive video to show. Absolutely. Sure. All right, moving along west on Lincoln Avenue. <laughs> if, if we're not missing anything else, I'm going to the far west side of Charleston and Douglas and Lincoln. You be name dropped where the new Hux is going, what it's been in the past. Many businesses have happened at that corner there. What's, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, that's there? the former Baldwin Pontiac again. When I was a kid, the mm -hmm. Baldwin family yep. uh, had the, had the uh, GMC uh, Pontiac facility, the dealership there for many, Correct. many years. Uh, the building was sold to uh, Davis Hawk, which is an uh, mm -hmm. uh, HVAC uh, mechanical contractor out of uh, the Champaign area. Wow. Uh, and one of the uh, um, um, uh, executives in that operation, Chris Reynolds, uh, his mom and dad, Tom and Sue Reynolds, live here in Charleston. And in fact, I saw Chris on a mower down there just a, a week or so ago mowing the property. But uh, they've purchased the property and you've seen a complete and total transformation and facelift. Mm -hmm. um, and they're gonna operate uh, what I would call a Southern operation of the Davis Hawk Mechanical Contracting. Doing uh, the job out at uh, Sarah Bush Lincoln on the addition wow. on the north side and mm -hmm. do some work, I believe it, uh, for Lakeland College and also do quite a bit of work in the Effingham area and felt like this would be a good addition for them. I'll get the follow-up question here. Thank you, Scott, for the summary of all those things. A lot is going on. Brandon, Lincoln Avenue, high traffic area uh, for Charleston, Illinois. And it's one thing for a community to have a couple of things mm -hmm. going on. But all at once, it's got to feel really good. Uh, of course it feels really good, especially, you know, I hate to even say this, but uh, post-COVID, you never know. No one knew what was going to happen and to be able to see all these different projects. And not just all the different projects, but even uh, the interest, you know, I mean, that that's huge. So it's one of those things that uh, when, um, you know, like Davis Hawk came in, Scott and I and, 
and Steve and, and former Mayor Inyart, we sit down and, and you know talk with them. We want to make sure that everyone knows we're extremely thankful for everyone that wants to come and invest in Charleston. But uh, this is going to be a busy couple years, uh, you know, along Lincoln and with all the resurfacing and then the new traffic lights and everything yeah. else. It's just it's just a facelift, but it's not. Uh, I mean, we're always looking for more, right? I mean, right. and not saying in a greedy way, I'm saying we're always looking for the community to continue to grow. And, and when you bring, when people start seeing mm -hmm. that ball gets rolling, you yeah. know, um, it, it just keeps on going. So I'm uh, confident that this is just gonna, you know, continue to uh, be a blessing to the community when we see things like this start to start to happen. I was gonna jump in there and say the word prosper. Yes, so, very, so very definitely, true. definitely not greedy. You want looking to prosper. For sure. Only have so much time with you because I want to save some time to talk with Josh Norman of EIU coming up here. Scott, a uh, notable public works project that's going on or have gone on that you'd like to highlight. So I would say probably the most notable uh, is our sister city phase two development down south of town. So uh, we've been kind of a hand, all hands on deck down there. Uh, the, the new maintenance facility is up. The new concession facility is up. A lot of infrastructure work is complete. The, the fields are pretty well in play now. Nice. We've done some landscaping, more to do. Uh, you'll start seeing what I like to call the cherry on top, you know, the fencing and mm -hmm. and a lot of the site amenities and things of that nature, the when streets in. The, when can we anticipate that facility finally being used? So we're going to be under, uh, we're going to be into the fall uh, for our first tournament, which will be the uh, Trojan Boys uh, Soccer Tournament, the Red and Gold Tournament. It's going to come back to Charleston. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe Steve would have to, to, to correct me on this. I think we've got at least 12, maybe going to end up with... Mm -hmm. We'd love to have as many as 16, but I think we've got at least 12. Uh, so we're excited about that. And then we're going to be the host of the uh, girls' uh, Red and Gold Trojan uh, Invitational again in the spring. So those are really two of the first biggies that are on the tournament list, if you will. And then we're starting to work with the Parks and Recreation team uh, and our soccer affiliate on hosting some tournaments then in 24. We don't want to get on it too early because the right. worst thing you can do mm -hmm. on natural grass is get ahead of yourself right. and get on that turf too early. So. Uh, we've got, still got a lot of work to do yet the rest of this year to get it prepped and ready. We may not have everything done by the fall, but, uh, but we're going to try to have it as finished as we possibly can. So we're real excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, and our public works crew, Steve, Diane, Kurt Busher, everybody in public works, they've right. just done a phenomenal job. It's a lot of work. You need a team effort there. Uh, Red and Gold Tournament's been going on in Charleston for a long time. Long, so. long time. Uh, so we're excited to um, be able to, to host that again in, in our in our new <coughs> facility and, mm -hmm. and think that, that the teams that are coming to visit Charleston right. again, they're going to come in, they're going to eat, they're going to stay, they're going to spend the night, a lot of things. It's, it's great for the mm -hmm. community, good for tourism. Um, and I think that once they come to visit and see what we have to offer, they're going to want to come back. All right, very good. I'm going to leave the last minute or two, Brandon. And I know this question warrants more than a minute or two. For sure. Uh, I want to ask you about Dr. David Glassman. On our next segment, we're going to talk with Josh Norman about EIU. And uh, Dr. Glassman uh, became president of EIU around the time that you became mayor of Charleston. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brandon, your thoughts on the impact that Dr. David Glassman has had on EIU and Charleston in his eight years? Yeah, you're right. Uh, two minutes is not enough time or a minute and a half. No, it's <laughs> all right. Um, you know, this is what I'll tell you is uh, I've worked hand in hand with him since day one. Um, Literally, one of my first meetings as mayor and one of his first meetings was uh, him and I in his office. And we had a common vision and a common goal, what we wanted to do. And um, President Glassman gave it his all and he told me he wasn't going to leave until he felt like things were turned around. Um, but being so close to him, he won't take any credit for it, so I will just sit here and tell you, from me to you, I know how hard that man's worked. Mm -hmm. um, I respect what he's done uh, for Eastern, for this community, all of his involvement, um, not just with Eastern, but he got ingrained in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, heck, he comes and will watch my son play rec baseball. You'll see him out at rec baseball games. He's at the 4-H and, uh, you know, auction buying things. So. Right. Uh, it, he went beyond just the university, but this university means so much to this community. Mm -hmm. And what David or what President Glassman gave this university was his his all. Um, I, for one, am extremely sad um, that uh, he's going to go. Uh, but I have the utmost confidence in, in Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Jay will be a phenomenal president and he's already ingrained in the community and right. he'll be able to take 
Eastern to that next step. I have, uh, you know, uh, utmost faith in that. But uh, David will be will be missed. Um, but he's still sticking around the community, and we'll still see his his face around here. So I'm I'm happy for that, and actually, so so are my kids. Um, so they don't want Uncle David to go anywhere. Uh, but anyway. Uh, Hopefully, David, you watch this. If not, from from my heart to to you, thank you so much for all that you have given this community and all that you have given to uh, Eastern and these extremely difficult times that you took on. Well said. Very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Brandon Combs and Scott Smith. With the latest going on in the city of Charleston, congratulations on all the work that's going on in Lincoln Avenue and throughout the community. We look forward to following up on all this down the road. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. I mean, appreciate it. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll head outside and talk with Josh Norman about the latest going on at Eastern Illinois University. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Charleston. back here on City Spotlight, this new on location episode on Charleston. As you can see, we are outside for this second segment on the campus of Eastern Illinois University. And you may recognize the gentleman to my right, Josh Norman, Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management at Eastern Illinois University. Josh, it's great to have you on the program again. So wonderful to be here. A little bit windy, but we're, we're, we're enjoying the, uh, the outside uh, quad here, outside the uh, Booth Library at Eastern Illinois University. And great to have Josh on as we tape here on May 2nd. The end of another uh, academic school year here at Eastern Illinois University. Josh, uh, what does the end of the academic school year mean to you? Well, I mean, it's just an exciting time from the standpoint of the fruition of all that hard work, sweat, blood, and tears, uh, you know, culminates in finals week. And then Saturday, we got a day full of graduation. We've got over a thousand graduates that are going to graduate across our three ceremonies. I mean, it's just amazing. And, and so many of my freshmen that I talk at in university foundations are graduating. It's just been incredible to witness their transformation over the last four years. And so just the culmination of that work and that transformation and just seeing those students reach that aspiration. And we know they're going to go out in the world and make a huge difference. So that's an exciting time for us here at Eastern. Very good. We are, again, we are taping uh, just prior to EIU's spring commencement ceremonies. Your area of enrollment management, we've had you on City Spotlight a few times to talk about it. And uh, are the numbers for EIU's enrollment, are they continuing to go in the direction that you want? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're really excited for the fall. Um, I was just telling the president the other day, he was asking me if we were going to break 9,000. And I said, so much of that rides on whether or not our international students can get their visas or not. But things are looking really positive from the standpoint of growth in our freshman class, huge increases in the number of I-20s produced for both our undergraduate and our graduate international students. And so I would imagine that we will break and exceed the 51 countries represented in our international student population. We'll continue to see that graduate population grow and we'll see a double digit percentage increase in the freshman class. You kind of answered my next question. Uh, one of my favorite moments uh, since we uh, helped stream the commencement uh, on the internet is uh, uh, near the beginning of the commencement. Uh, they recognize all the international students at EIU uh, with a shot of the flags and, and uh, it is amazing. I think every time I talk with you, more and more international students and more and more countries represented. It's, it's it brings a smile to your face. Yes, it does. And, uh, you know, I always counsel our domestic students that, you know, you may never get to travel to Spain or Portugal or Ghana or um, Hyderabad, India, but we've got students from all over the country and uh, and across the nations uh, here on our campus. And it's incredible to be in relationship with those students and experience uh, that culture. You know, we have students who've been over at our house from South Korea. Uh, my 
kids are eating the food that they cook. They're experiencing our culture. I think the biggest tragedy is if we have an international student on our campus that never makes it into an American home. We want them to have that experience and that's why we encourage the community to get involved on our campus and befriend and be in relationship with these international students because that's a part of their education. That's a part of their experience. It would make it's part of what makes Eastern awesome is that we are so relational and so connected as a community and we want that for our international students. I remember being uh, much younger uh, in my uh, teens and uh, my dad worked at Eastern Illinois University and I remember even back 30 some years ago seeing uh, the different international students on this campus so it really is a beautiful thing. Josh, uh, again the spring semester is uh, concluded once, once people are seeing this at home for the first time. So your area for enrollment management what are the summer, summer, month, summer months like for you between the end of one school year to the start of another? It's really interesting as we continue to recruit the class, I mean, all the way through August. And so we start recruiting the class. Right now we're finishing up the class of 23. We start recruiting the class of 24. So there's that overlap. And so it's kind of a high pressure, high stress time. We're also working on strategic initiatives. I'll bring our strategic plan to President's Council and then to the Board of Trustees in June. And so we right now have over 60 action plans in this year's strategic plan, things that we're going to do to innovate and grow as a university and continue to not just grow our enrollment but make sure that our students here can be successful that they retain persist and graduate uh, you mentioned the action plans and I remember I think the first handful of times that we've had you on the number of action plans you have continues to go up I see a trend how, how many more years before it hits hundred uh, you know, I don't think it'll be long because we've got some demographic shifts that are going to happen in the next few years, which means we have to do more. We have to innovate and we have to uh, continue to expand the depth of our creativity when it comes to creating academic programs and supports for student success because it's not going to get easier in the next five years. It's going to get harder. And so we have to do our part to make sure that Eastern can continue to thrive when it comes to enrollment and revenue generation associated with net tuition revenue. This may be a part of my next question or two um, as we talk about Dr. David Glassman. Again, we're taping here in May of 2023. Uh, these last three years, if they've gone by fast or slow, it, I guess it depends on the person, but uh, ask this to many K through 12 superintendents and, and educators um, since the last time we talked. Um, how refreshing has it been to be on this campus and it feel kind of like normal again? I absolutely love it. I mean, being able to see my students' faces and interacting in person in meetings. I just came from an in-person meeting with our communications planning group. I mean, it's just amazing. Because our culture is so relationally focused, it was difficult during the pandemic to do so many things remote. Like, we really are an in-person, relationship-focused campus, and so it feels amazing to be back to normal here on Eastern's campus be able to talk face to face like yep. we're talking right now. Very good. All right, my last couple of questions to our kind of a recap of uh, EIU the last eight years and moving forward. First, let's talk Dr. David Glassman. Uh, this is uh, his final uh, weeks, I guess, as we're counting down here as the spring semester is ending here. His tenure as uh, president of EIU, he'll still be a, uh, I guess, faculty on hand. He'll be teaching a course or two, but Josh, um, working with him, um, his time here at EIU uh, in the community of Charleston, I asked Mayor Combs and Scott Smith in the previous segment, uh, his contributions to not only EIU and the community of Charleston. What can you say, summarize in your own words, um, David Glassman's impact on this institution over these last eight years? I think we had a leadership summit recently, and I think Governor Edgar said it best. You know, he said, I've known virtually every president at this university, and David Glassman is exceptional. I mean, he has been a rock through crisis after crisis. I mean, I mean, coming from Jim Edgar, one of uh, Charleston's own and an EIU alum, coming from him, uh, those, those are strong words. Yes, yeah, I really was so happy that he concluded the panel with those comments because President Glassman absolutely deserves it. I mean, he is a man who is uh, people-focused, cares deeply about the university, um, the welfare of our students, our faculty, and our staff. And it's been evident, you know, whether it was the impasse, uh, which he came in his first day was the start of that crisis, or the pandemic. He has just led so very well. And I just, I love him to death, to be honest with you. My kids, you love him. 
Um, you know, it's just really sad to see him go. We just really appreciate his contribution over the last eight years. He has been fantastic as a leader here at the university. I ran into Dr. Glassman uh, last October uh, in Effingham at a uh, motivational speaking function. He was asked to give a speech, and we talked briefly before that um, convention talked. And uh, he, he was talking about how, how most proud he was of being able to navigate through the, the pandemic. So uh, I don't think any educator, regardless of if it's K through 12 or higher ed, uh, to be able to navigate through the pandemic uh, was a, a daunting task. All right, so we thank Dr. David Glassman on his time here on City Spotlight at the EIU uh, for his contributions to this community. All right, moving forward, the new EIU president didn't have to go very far. Dr. Jay Gatrell, he's been the provost the last handful of years. Jay has is, is, uh, been uh, announced as the next Eastern Illinois University president. We've had him on the program. We'll be seeing more of Jay in that bow tie of his. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I've had the special privilege of having Jay as my boss since my beginning in this position and so but also my boss's yes, boss yes, yeah exactly um and you know he just is a fantastic guy i'm excited about the continuity like he knows the culture he knows the faculty he knows the staff he knows how eiu works and so he's gonna hit the ground running and he's got vision for the future and i'm just excited for what his leadership will mean for this community I look around the table at President's Council, at our General Council, at our VP of Student Affairs, our VP of Business Affairs, all those folks who make the decisions for the university, and I could not be more excited, especially as I observe instability at other institutions in our region. Um, it's just amazing to have so many folks around the table that care so deeply about this place. And Jay leads that charge and so really excited about his future leadership of the university and him becoming the president of Eastern Illinois University. We look forward to having Dr. Gatrell on uh, the next time we tape uh, probably in the fall semester when he we interview him for the first time as the new Eastern Illinois University president. It's been a pleasure having Josh Norman on from Enrollment Management at EIU. Josh you've put a nice perspective on this uh, school year and a little bit of the last handful of years. We appreciate again your time here on City Spotlight. Thank you, Rami, and I really appreciate you having me on. It's always a pleasure. Great to be outside with Josh Norman here on the campus of Eastern Illinois University, and that'll wrap up our latest City Spotlight episode on Charleston. Thanks for watching. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.